Hello and welcome to our English language class. My name is Ikuo Essen. Today I'm going to teach you something very important and that is hints on summary writing. This class is particularly designed for students aspiring to write the West African Senior School Certificate Examination and other related examinations. The aspect of summary writing carries 30 marks so your examiner expects of you to be able to reduce a passage of about 500 or 600 words to about five or six simple sentences that may not be up to 50 words put together. Therefore, for you to excel in this aspect of examination, you need to have the following hints at your fingertips. Again, you're welcome to the class. So what are those things that you really need to know about summary writing? First, you should know that a summary expresses in as few words as possible what has been said in very many words. Therefore, summary writing calls for brevity, that is being brief. Closely connected to that is the fact that you should know that in as much as you are trying to be brief, your sentences must contain the original information being conveyed in the passage. So don't throw away the original information of the writer while you're trying to give us your answer because you may be writing out of point. Your examiner's expectation. What your examiner expects of you is actually the hints that we are going to learn about in this lesson today. Number one of those hints are is rather. Read the questions first. This is my personal opinion. It's the advice that I usually give to my students and I think it is useful. So you, before you before going to read your summary passage, you should always make it an habit to first get yourself familiar with the questions attached to the passage before you go to read your passage. Closely connected to this is that you should try as much as possible to read through your passage at least twice, at least twice before attempting to answer the questions. Your first reading is just an attempt to get familiar with the passage. You are not intending to answer the questions. You just want to know the message that the writer is trying to pass across. Then your second reading and subsequent readings should be thorough. You should try to read very carefully this time around for you to be able to locate things like topic sentences, that may be clues to the answers that you're looking for. And what is a topic sentence? A topic sentence is a sentence that carries the major idea in the passage or in paragraphs. Closely connected to this is the fact that you should be able to paraphrase a passage. How do you paraphrase a passage? Or a sentence you change the words you change the sentence structure but retain the meaning in changing the words in your summary writing you will need your knowledge of synonyms to come to play in this aspect you should be able to substitute words correctly in context without changing the meaning then changing the sentence structure you should remember that we have types of sentences like simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, and some sentences may come in form of questions. So when you come across all these sentences, after you must have changed the words in your passage, you should try as much as possible to reduce your summary answer to a simple sentence. And what is a simple sentence? A simple sentence contains just one idea and one finite verb. 
right? And the next thing you have to know is that you should avoid mindless lifting or verbatim copying because it's going to cost you zero mark. Mindless lifting or verbatim copying has to do with a situation in which you decide to copy your answers directly the way they are written in the passage. So don't attempt to do this because it's it will give you a serious penalty by losing the whole map. Avoid irrelevant or extraneous materials. Irrelevant or extraneous materials are going to cost you one mark at each scoring point. So you need to avoid it like a plague. What are those irrelevant materials? There are things like connectives, examples, illustrations that the writer must have used in his passage. Examples of connectives are firstly, secondly, moreover, also, and so on. The writer may use them to point you to the answers that are in the paragraphs but it is not your duty to use them in giving us the answers. Then extraneous materials are things like examples or illustrations that the writer might have used to buttress his or her point in a passage. So you don't need to leave those examples as your answers. Just look for the main idea, the main point being explained in the passage and pick and give us your answer. Ignore the illustrations and examples that have been given by the, by the writer. And another thing you should take note of is the fact that you don't use conjunctions to answer your questions. Conjunctions are words like and, or, because, while. They are part of the extraneous materials that we're talking about here. So try as much as possible to avoid them. Also, avoid grammatical errors because each grammatical error committed will cost you a half mark at each scoring point. So try as much as possible to make your sentences error-free. Take note of pointers or connectives because they may be clue to your answers in some cases. Pointers or connectives have already been mentioned in the lesson. They are things like firstly, secondly, furthermore, also, moreover. So they may sometimes be pointers to the answers you're looking for in the passage. So watch out for them. Avoid the use of phrases except they are correctly connected to a preamble. And the phrases that are not correctly connected to a preamble will cost you two and a half marks at each scoring point. That is why it is not advisable to use phrases if you really don't know how to go about them. And that's also the reason our number one point here is very, very important. Always try as much as possible to write your answers in full sentences. And in writing your answers in full sentences, take note of the fact that your sentence must start with a capital letter and end with a full stop. You must also number your sentences. You can use ordinary number like one, two, three. Or you can use Roman figures or you use ABC as the case may be. I have already talked about the importance of simple sentences. Your summary answers must strictly be written in simple sentences. A simple sentence contains just one idea and one finite verb. So take note of that. 
So that's all I have for you as hints on summary writing. So to further explain this class, I've written a short passage here. So let's look at it together. Before we look at the passage, let us first flip to the questions attached to the passage, because that's what I've just taught you. Question number one, in one sentence, state how the writer sees coronavirus. Question number two, in one sentence, state the attitude of the writer according to the last paragraph. Let's go back to the passage. The year is 2020. The world is facing one of the greatest health challenges in history, the spread of coronavirus. Everyone has been made equal by force. In a bid to obey the government order and stay safe, everyone that is superior in one way or the other has been locked down by a tiny virus. Intelligent people are distracted by disturbing noises. The poor, the rich, the ugly, and the most beautiful now wear masks so they do not get infected. Graciously, it's not a locked up, because in a short while, everything will have to change. There will be freedom again. This time around, a virtuous freedom. That's the end of the passage. So let's go back to our questions. In one sentence, state how the writer sees coronavirus. This is a suggested possible wrong answer to that question. The writer sees coronavirus as a disease that has made the poor, the rich, the ugly, and the most beautiful to wear masks. This kind of answer is going to attract me zero mark because it is believed to be lifted directly from the passage. If you look at the word, the poor, from the poor to the last sentence, so the last word in the passage, those words are lifted directly from the passage, probably from the second paragraph of the passage. So such an answer is going to attract me a zero mark. Okay, so you take note of that. And let's go to the next question. Question number two. In one sentence, state the attitude of the writer according to the last paragraph. And this is a suggested possible wrong answer. The writer believes that everything will have to change. This answer, as it is, is going to attract me zero mark. Because everything will have to change. It's lifted directly from the last paragraph. Let's take a look at that. Graciously, it's not a locked up because in a short while, everything will have to change. So this is not a good answer. So let's look at some suggested answers that are correct. The first question states that we should state how the writer sees coronavirus. In the first paragraph, the writer tells us that coronavirus has made everyone to live the same lifestyle, it has made everyone to stay indoors, that is stated in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So my summary answer to that question is that the writer sees coronavirus as a leveler. This is a perfect answer. If I don't want to write it this way, I can say something like this. The writer sees coronavirus as a disease that has made everyone to live the same lifestyle. That's also a good answer. Then to question number two. We are told to summarize the attitude of the writer in the last paragraph. My answer here is the writer is optimistic. If I don't want to write it that way, I can say that the writer is hopeful. If we go back to the passage, 
as the last paragraph, you can see that the right believes that everything will change. There will be positive freedom again. So all that put together, I summarize it to be that the writer is hopeful or the writer is optimistic. This is the perfect answer. So remember not to join answers like this together with hand as the conjunction hand. So it is wrong for you to say something like this. The writer is optimistic and hopeful. So this is all that I have for you in this summary writing class. In case you have any question or any suggestion to put across, please feel free to do so. I wish you the very best in your examination. Continue to stay safe.